Hi everyone, I'm Kelly O'Horo, and this is Adaptable Behavior Explained. Hi there, thanks so much for tuning in to Adaptable. You are now watching part two of a two-part series uh, on health, mental health, and proactive treatment of the body related to supplements and exercise and hormone balance. I have with me Chris Desmarche. I'm very excited to have him here again. Uh, he is a co-owner of Rise Health, and I'd uh, like you to introduce a little bit more about what that is and, and how we know each other and for those that missed part one. Yeah, so I, uh, I am a fitness pro professional by trade. I have a master's degree in exercise science a certified strength and conditioning specialist and your former personal trainer. Yes. So that is how we know each other. And at Rise, my new project, we are really focused on uh, holistic, personalized, preventative healthcare. So we're outside of the insurance model, but we really focus on things like hormone balance, body composition, optimization, fitness testing, fitness training, nutrition, supplementation, kind of weaving all of those things into one cohesive approach to help people live healthier longer. That's our mission. Being proactive with our health is so important. It's certainly not part of how many people think about health and wellness. It's kind of like with mental health. You know, I tell people, why do we wait until our life is falling apart where we're, you know, on the midst of a potential divorce or I'm having a, a depression breakdown or I'm so anxious that, you know, my boss has asked me to take a leave of absence. And now I think all of a sudden I should really go address my mental health. And I have a friend who said, you know, we need to be proactive about this stuff and we don't wait till we have a mouthful of cavities until we go to the dentist. We get right. our six month checkup. And I, I tell people with mental health, you know, we should have a checkup from the neck up and we should have an objective person who's not in our circle help us to be our accountability partner on how we're managing the stress of our lives and what i'm hearing you say and what you talked a little bit more about in part one was about the importance of proactive health care yep. so walk me through if i was a new client at rise what that might look like when i walked in the door and i'm like hey i, I subscribe i want to be proactive with yeah. my health care uh, tell us tell us about what that would look like. Absolutely. So the cool thing about our approach is we have a few different verticals or different entry points into our program, depending on, you know, where someone is sort of with their lifestyle right now or maybe where their interests might be. So, you know, to your point about a checkup from the neck up, mm -hmm. you know, something really exciting that we do is we have a whole suite of really diagnostic fitness testing, but fitness measures that are highly associated with your overall health and longevity. Okay. So things like a DEXA body composition scan, which is the highest standard medical grade body composition analysis, it's x-ray based, and it will give you very granular uh, reading on your body fat percentage, your lean muscle mass, your bone density. So it, all of those things specifically, you know, your lean mass, your bone density, things like that are highly correlated with living quality of life sure. as you age. Um, similarly, we test VO2 max. So that would be the pinnacle of cardiorespiratory fitness testing. Mm -hmm. It's done using, you know, a very fancy looking mask mm -hmm. and typically riding a bike or a treadmill going to full exhaustion, essentially on a graded exercise test, but it's going to measure how efficiently your body can utilize oxygen during maximal exercise. The cool thing about something like that, people say, you know, I'm not a triathlete, like why would I care about that? Because it's such a great proxy mm -hmm. as a measurement for a lot of very positive work that's been done over time on someone's fitness, we see the data bear out that, you know, going from the bottom quartile of very poor VO2 max, even to like the third quartile, not even elite, is more highly associated with improvements in all-cause mortality mm -hmm. than cessation of wow. smoking, uh, type two diabetes, hypertension, big things that wow. people know is very unhealthy. So I always tell people like, wouldn't you want to know if you have diabetes or high blood pressure? Right. You know, it's very valuable to get a figure such as your VO2 max and see okay. where you fall within that chart. Um, we do things like testing grip strength as well to really paint an overall picture of your health as it like relates to your fitness in your body. You yeah. Wow, that's so fascinating. that would be, you know, one of our, our, our primary verticals. And then, you know, similarly, and what we, comes with that? Like after you get the yeah. results of all your tests, then what? Well, the cool thing about we do at rise is those tests can be done all la carte, but they're also included in our membership plan. Mm -hmm. So primarily and foundationally, we are a membership based practice and the memberships primarily focus around services such as hormone replacement, 
and in some cases when indicated medical weight loss. So okay. using things like GLP-1 agonist peptides. Mm -hmm. um, but the way someone would approach That's that- That's the semiglutide, right? Semiglutide, trizepatide, okay. Wagovia, Zempic, all those. <laughs> right. um, and you know, they're great tools that are certainly useful in certain cases. But mm -hmm. what we see with you know things like those in particular is used isolated, they can oftentimes have unintended consequences. You know, we can see weight loss of which too high a percentage is lean muscle mass. Right. You might lose 20 pounds, but if 15 of that was muscle mass, mm -hmm. you're lighter, but you're actually fatter as a percentage. Right. And so things like the decks of body composition scanning, uh, the counseling that we provide around proper fitness programs, proper supplementation, protein consumption, things like that, will help to track and make sure that's not happening right. when we put someone on, on a treatment like that. That's, so that's awesome. uh, those memberships, the way that someone would approach that is we, we start with a very comprehensive blood panel. We do a super deep dive specifically around things like hormones and a metabolic panel, but it's an exhaustive list. And you'd sit down with the provider and simply discuss your symptoms, you know, how you're feeling, your medical history, all that normal stuff. But also, what is your motivation for living a healthier life? You know, right. we want to dig down a little bit deeper into why are you even considering this new preventative approach to care and, and, and understand your why behind it sure. to really get to know you that's and what's awesome. driving you. And, and then we would you know <laughs> initiate a, a treatment plan that's best for you and to incorporate all those things. And so then monthly or every month or how often would I go to address these things? Essentially mm -hmm. as needed, you know, typically, you know, you would start with, you know, if for example, you initiated hormone replacement therapy, we're going to want to see follow-up labs mm -hmm. in approximately five weeks and a follow-up appointment uh, to review those results in six weeks. Mm -hmm. However, in, in between those, uh, that initial consultation and that follow-up, you're going to see another team member. You're going to get your DEXA scan. You're mm -hmm. going to get your resting metabolic rate tested so we can see how many calories you burn at rest. We're going to give you a diet plan. We're going to give you a fitness plan. So there's multiple touch points with our team, uh, independent of which specific treatment you might be partaking in from a medical standpoint. Okay. So I'm really excited for the conversation that we had uh, before when I came by to, to tour Rise and see, you know, what it was that you did and, and why I wanted to support this model, because uh, as a mental health professional, we are so busy being reactive. And I just really respect Rise's model of reimagining healthcare mm -hmm. and really let's try to let's try to prevent people from getting sick. And I think that especially with COVID, we really saw people being so re reactionary and so terrified. Yeah. And I really think it's beautiful to be able to trust that my body is healthy, that I take good care of myself, that I can be proud of my choices for the most part. Of course, nobody's perfect, mm -hmm. but um, I'm excited to be able to show our viewers. Um, you guys are going to take me through all of those tests and we're going to be able to show you, you know, clips of that experience and what one might expect from, from the, the variation of all these assessments that you guys offer. And um, that way, our viewers can see firsthand a little bit more about what that might look like. That'll so I'm excited to see, and hopefully I'm healthy enough that my results won't <laughs> be scary. Find out. <laughs> um, and so I might have some shame resilience opportunities uh, because it does take some courage to be that Absolutely. open and that vulnerable. But I think it's a good example to set for people. And I have a, a personal mantra of I don't ask people to go anywhere that I haven't gone mm -hmm. myself. And I don't like to refer to places when I haven't seen firsthand what, what they offer. So I am excited for us to go down that journey a little bit together. Yeah. And hopefully it's not going to make me want to kick my own ass about things <laughs> that I've been doing and choices that I've been making. But so, so tell us a little bit about how the things that you see with, with people. I know that personally, I would say that I'm at a baseline of pretty much, you know, I do all the things, mental health, I do mm -hmm. exercise, I eat pretty healthy. But uh, when I think about just my baseline of stress, mm -hmm. I have managed uh, and have had to learn to manage high cortisol levels, just generally yeah. speaking, and probably some adrenal fatigue and things yeah. like that, because I go hard, mm -hmm. not unlike you shared with us in your, in our last episode. And yeah. so um, I know that high levels of stress oftentimes come with people who are successful. What are some other things that you tend to see from your patients over at Rise that, that you're addressing? Absolutely. Well, I think there's, we could go in a lot of different directions with this, but I'll, I'll, I'll break it down into categories, maybe with some actionable steps for the listeners. So we could sort of just set a baseline sure. and say, you know, these would be some great places to start. So if we start with the things that we can control on a day-to-day -day basis, which is what I like to do, right? And, and stack, stack small wins and good habits, mm -hmm. right? It's not, 
I never advise, you know, a client, a patient, anything like that to make wholesale changes, changes all at once in multiple facets. We won't stick with them. People People will never stick stick with with it. Mm -hmm. And, and it'll be discouraging because they'll try to, and then they'll fail and they'll say, I can't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we'd rather do is pick, you know, one thing and develop a habit of doing that successfully, gain some momentum and then add something. Right. So that's smart, you know, in the realm of nutrition, that's an area where people have a lot of questions. There's a ton of conflicting information out there, which makes it very confusing. Uh, But we like to really simplify it. And I always think of it, you can think of it sort of as a pyramid. Right. And, and not the old pyramid. No, no, no. <laughs> not no, the, not one the learned, food pyramid. Not the one I learned yeah. when I was a kid. I was like, that was wrong. Clearly no, that was wrong. Not but. the food pyramid. More of more of levels of of you know a foundational piece to less important pieces that are still valuable, but mm-hmm. again, less important. So first is managing overall calories. Mm-hmm. This is what we see most oftentimes not accounted for. And there's different ways to do this. You know, uh, one way that some people may have tried others, not, I would encourage everyone to try it at some point mm-hmm. because it's very enlightening is tracking your cal- calories. I, I remember when, you, when I was seeing you and you had me get, um, the carbon app, ca- the carbon app. Yeah, and I did it for, I want to say like six to eight months, very consistently. And it was, that was actually what, what helped me to learn. There was, there was something wrong with me mm. because I was at a deficit operating at a deficit and I was not an overeater and I was just not budging when it yeah. came to like weight loss. And you know, that's when my naturopath and I started digging into hormones and what else is going yeah. on and, and the picture of stress and when am I stressed and when are my cortisol levels high right. and all those things. But it, it was, it was so frustrating and discouraging because I was doing the things, you know, that I was supposed to be doing related to the calorie piece. And I was just like, so frustrated. So. Yeah. And so what, you know, you have to see if once you have that bottom layer established, you can move your way up, mm-hmm. right? Which you did. Uh, but a lot of people are missing missing that base layer. Mm-hmm. And, and at the end of the day, if you're if you're after body composition changes, that is going to be you know the number one thing that you're going to have to account for to either lose weight successfully, maintain weight, mm-hmm. gain weight, gain muscle if sure. that's your goal. And and being able to track that will give you knowledge around what are macronutrients, right? Mm-hmm. Proteins, fats, carbohydrates. What, what different, what do foods have in them made up of those macronutrients? A lot of people are unaware. Right. And so just gaining a baseline knowledge of that. Just generally speaking is so discouraging because of what we allow to be put into our food related to preservatives and chemicals. And it's, I mean, you go to Europe and you just do not read the back of the labels. They don't, I mean, you read them and they're totally different than the backs of our labels. Our, our food is really unfortunate. Our food is certainly more devoid of the micronutrients Mm -hmm. than it used to be. So going up that pyramid, you know, micronutrients are near the top. That's where things like supplementation come in, right? Right. Because even if we're eating a well-balanced diet, we may still be devoid of some of those nutrients that we need to function optimally. You know, things like, you know, you mentioned a couple of them. What I typically recommend to almost everyone would be you know, omega-3 fatty mm-hmm. acids, fish say, oil, fish oil pills that I've oil. never had a doctor not say you need to be taking. It's hard know, to get enough fish oil. A day yeah. of fish oil. And I'm like, that's so much. Fish oil. <laughs> yeah. Two to four grams. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I typically recommend. Uh, and that's, you know, a couple big capsules. Not everyone likes swallowing right. those big soft gels. Uh, vitamin D is another big one. And good quality fish oil. I think that's another thing. Like Absolutely. for a long time, I was taking one uh, that was maybe it was like a Costco one. And my doctor was like, it's, there's a lot of filler in this one. And so, you know, we switched to yeah. a different one. And, and even, even how uh, logistically like they're transported, they need to be mm. kept cool. Oh, wow. And I've received rancid fish oil before where I, wow. I took it out and it was sitting on my porch in Arizona, right? I'm like, there's no way this is going to be good. Sure enough, I open it up, sniff it, smells fishy. All the soft gels are stuck together. So, you know, we have our own private label supplements mm-hmm. at Rise that we know are of the top quality and they arrive in a, you know, freezer sealed bag mm-hmm. with a ice pack in there. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, some of those attention to some of those details is very important. As I mentioned, vitamin D is another big one for people. Mm-hmm. Most people are deficient. 
even Which if they live in a sunny Arizona. climate. I mean, we yeah. we're in the sun all the time. I just went to, got my blood work back. And I mean, we're coming off of summer here for us. And I was in the sun a lot. I mean, I'm browner than usual. And mm -hmm. I just, and I don't, I only wear sunscreen on my face yeah. typically in my chest. And, um, and I was, I was low in D I'm like, how am I low in D I've been in the sun so much and yeah. I'm still low in D. So it's tricky. It's surprising. I mean, it's surprising. A lot of people, you know, even when they live in a warm climate, the lifestyle that we live now, you're not in the sun as much as you think, right. you know, you're indoors, it's hot outside. You're trying to stay out of the sun. Um, you know, magnesium is another big one, uh, the soil and, you know, a lot of the, the foods that contain higher levels of magnesium have been depleted mm -hmm. of those. You, it's another one that it's hard to get too mm -hmm. much magnesium. Um, and then if we go up into another layer <laughs> of supplements, you mentioned, you know, even controlling cortisol, mm -hmm. things like adaptogens can be very valuable for people. Right. Those are Describe things, what that means. Yeah. So an adaptogen is sort of, uh, you know, they're typically herbs or, or, or natural compounds that modulate the stress response. Mm. Uh, I think if I were to put an umbrella term over them, it would be, it would be that. And, and what that means is, you know, whether the, the stress response is, is elevated or sometimes suppressed, mm. it can sort of bring it back to a baseline. So what, um, you said there was a few that you liked and I wanted to hear what they specifically do. Yeah. So ashwagandha mm -hmm. is a big one people may have heard of. It's, it's probably the most well-known and most renowned adaptogen. It's been used for centuries in Ayurveda, a U so I can never say this word. Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah, Ayurvedic. <laughs> it's the worst Ayurvedic. word. Ayurvedic yeah. medicine. It's been used for centuries in Ayurvedic medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is a pretty potent cortisol modulator. Mm. So it's been shown in studies, uh, and there's been a lot of actual clinical research done on it because of its popularity sure. for such a long period of time to reduce serum cortisol levels up to 30%. That's amazing. So that's a huge change. I know personally, I feel a little more even, a little more steady when I'm utilizing ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. It's typically utilized in dosages about 300 to 600 milligrams a day. And it can be beneficial because of that effect on cortisol for obviously sort of overall perceived well-being, um, energy levels, because if someone's so wired all the time, it can actually be fatiguing. Oh, it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, things like purportedly testosterone um, and some of those things that have an inverse relationship with cortisol, some mm -hmm. of those hormonal systems and even sleep, you mm -hmm. know, balancing out and getting that cortisol down at right. night where you want it to be can help improve sleep quality. Sure. So. Ashwagandha is one I recommend pretty often. Uh, another one that is a little less popular that is also clinically uh, shown to be uh, effective is Rhodiola rosea. Mm -hmm. So R H. That's, that's one I'm on. Yeah, it's disgusting. I don't know how it tastes. Mixed with like ginger, <laughs> and I have to just take these drops of it, and it's just okay. nasty. But I'm doing it. It works. Mm -hmm. uh, it works. It's it's more. I would say that ashwagandha is a more relaxing compound, mm. whereas rhodiola is typically more stimulating. Mm. It's also been shown to have a cortisol modulating effect, uh, but it's it's been shown in the research to improve fatigue mm. under stress. Okay. So both mental and also physically, like okay. aerobic exercise, time to exhaustion, things okay. like that. It's been shown to improve exercise capacity. So it's actually included in some pre-workouts now. Okay. Yeah. And I personally notice a difference when I take, you know, about 300 milligrams of Rhodiola Rosea before a hard workout. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit extra push. Interesting. Yeah. So. So fascinating when we can key into to the machine. Yeah. I mean, it's a machine and people, you know, we'll spend so much time being careful about our vehicles and the care that we put into our cars and things yeah. like that. And then we'll just put just garbage into our machine that is carrying us through this, this one opportunity we have called life and this human experience. And we'll yeah. just take such crap care of ourselves and, and really treat it poorly. So I think it's awesome that you guys are looking to try to get people in a more proactive way optimizing the machine yeah. that is our body. Yeah, sure. we we use that same analogy and you think about some of the things that we're talking about from a nutritional standpoint or hor a hormonal standpoint as mm -hmm. well. If you think about your body as a machine, you think about it like a car. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be you could build the greatest car possible, you could have a Ferrari, mm -hmm. but if you don't know how to drive it, Right. You're still, if you're not a good driver, you're still not going to perform the way you want sure. to. So our job is to give you the best car possible. Right. And your job is to teach people how to drive right. it. <laughs> right. But you could also be the best mm -hmm. driver. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, you know, 87 Civic, <laughs> you're not only going to get so far. Right. Right. And so it, it sort of goes hand in glove. But 
we want to make sure we, we acknowledge the interconnectedness of those things and do what we can to give people the best chance to be successful. That's really great. So as far as like what you're learning related to this journey personally, um, uh, hopefully you turned into tuned into part one and, and understood Chris's why a little bit more. But when you think about your journey and just this constant evolution of mm -hmm. learning and what you have gained as part of owning rise and, and this, this, um, part of your life, yeah. what, what can you share with us? Well, that's a great question. I would say, you know, one thing that my team at Rise and we have, you know, some of the best providers, I think in the country, in the state, whatever <laughs> you want to say, um, that they've really opened my eyes to is the difference between being optimal and being normal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you look at, if you've, anyone's ever had lab work and you see that reference range that pops up, right? And you say, well, I'm, I'm kind of smack dab in the middle of that, so I'm normal, there's nothing I need to do. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to things like hormones, you wanna think about what, is that, what does that reference range represent? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the, the average of the average American that's my age and my sex or, you know, whatever that reference range is based mm -hmm. off of. And so being normal for what that average is, if you just look out into the population, is not necessarily where I want to be, No, <laughs> you know? And so being optimal means, mm -hmm. you know, symptomatically for me, obviously within the guidelines of what's healthy for my body, what's the best I can actually feel? And not mm -hmm. just settling for normal, but figuring out what optimal looks like. And that's more of an individual journey for each person. Sure. And that's why we have to take that approach. Mm -hmm. You know, we're very collaborative. It's very communicative. And so we're trying to figure out, hey, how are you feeling? How are you reacting to this? Where can we adjust things for you to really give you that optimal uh, performance and health and feeling right. for yourself and not just be like, oh, check. Yeah, you fell in the average range. Well, I look around. I'm like, I don't want to be average. Sorry, right. <laughs> especially when it comes to my health. Right. So that's been just a paradigm shift for me. Okay. Um, and I think just uh, taking a more proactive approach goes hand in hand with that. The earlier in life that I could get to a point where I'm feeling optimal, the more time I'm going to have to stack just positive momentum, right? Yeah. I know at some point in life, as I age, we're all going to gradually decline sure. in our it physical starts, capacity. I think for women, we start it. Maybe it's the same for men. You probably know this answer better, but I remember hearing a statistic at some point, like at 20, by the time you're 25, you start to decline 5% every five years with your muscle mass without yeah. changing a darn thing about how you act. And I'm like, that's really depressing. Yeah, you know, different physical qualities will degrade sort of starting at different times. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the higher peak you can get to, the higher you're going to end up far, even with that the, downward the, slope. When you have further to fall, you're Ex not going to fall as far. Exactly, right? <laughs> the bottom is, is a better place. You so. know, and that's even an exciting thing because someone might be listening and saying, oh, well, you know, I'm 65 and I've neglected my health. Well, the great thing about that is that that decline is assuming that you're essentially maxed out. Mm -hmm. And if you're maxed out, you're going to decline. But if you've been neglecting your health, you could be healthier at age 70, 75 right. than you are at 65. Right. I actually, my mother-in-law, she, she passed away in June, but she, you know, swears that she started going to the pool and she hadn't done that for many, many years. She had gotten a couple of knee replacements mm -hmm. and she started going to the pool once she did that. And she, she stated that she felt better at 80 than she did at 60. I believe it. Because she started moving. She started eating better. She yep. started taking better care of herself. And I think that's just, it's just kind of reiterating what you're saying. It's like, yeah, depends on what you're doing, how this, how you go out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the old saying, you know, the best time to start was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Right now. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Let's do that. Today, and, yeah. and back to those small wins and controlling mm -hmm. what you can control, you know, right. you know, getting to a place like, like rise where we can actually help you discern with data, with understanding, you know, where are your weak spots, mm -hmm. where are these areas for improvement, right. give you a plan and come alongside you with that plan and say, Hey, we're going to start here and we're going to fix this. That's awesome. And then once you start fixing that momentum builds and we've already seen, you know, awesome changes for yeah. people four months in. Right. So. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. It's a wealth of knowledge. And I know that is just like the tip of the iceberg as far as what you guys yeah. can impart upon your patients over there. And I just appreciate your willingness to share with us uh, this, unfortunately, a bit novel, proactive mm. approach to, to, to medical health. And of course, I believe that it's all connected. Our, our physical health absolutely. is absolutely goes hand in hand with our mental health and vice versa. And so I appreciate you, you know, partnering with me today for this show. And we'll give you more information about how you can learn more about RISE and some of the uh, some of the resources that they offer at the website 
which is rise health, rise health, az.com rise health, az.com. Um, and we'll put that in the description below, but, um, I hope that you found this helpful and beneficial and you can find a wealth of information on their website. So thank you so much, Chris, for being here. Thank you all for tuning into this show today. And until we meet again, don't forget to lead with love. It'll never steer you wrong.